precious people of God, trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Now I began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom. We'll continue from there. Bless God. Number one, we looked at two last week. Number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing God. God only, God first, God above all. And we explored the first three words of Genesis or first four words of Genesis 1 verse 1. I'm just doing a quick recap. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, the first four words, in the beginning, God. The beginning of everything must be God. You do not ask God to come and patch your life. You don't create your agenda, create your plans, and ask God to endorse it. Uh -uh. He's Alpha, Omega, not Kronos, Omega. God will not join you on the way. He has to start. Are we together? The Bible does not call him Kronos. You don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions. He's Alpha and Omega. And so we challenge ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom, those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt God and his purposes above their desires, above their intentions. I want it this way. But I acknowledge the fact that when God becomes above everything, he protects, he preserves. Two, we spoke about the concept of success, tying it with the law of the mind. It's very important that transformation is important in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we reign by light, we reign by knowledge, and that knowledge comes through transformation transformation through renewal and enlightenment take notes transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of christ not everything in your mind is dangerous not everything in your mind is wrong but when you come to christ the holy spirit adam before his fall did not need renewal there was no need for renewal are we together the content in his mind and his understanding came directly from God. Satan began to sow a seed of an information. When Jesus came, the Bible says, um, God now came walking in the cool of the day. Adam, where art thou? He said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you? That means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me. Who told you? Who told you? You have banked an information that is a seed that will grow. Are we together? Yes. I hope you know that it is not only God that is the sower of the word. It is not only Satan too sows. Remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears. While men slept, an enemy, whoever that enemy is, we know he's a farmer too because he sows. So you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with. You can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing. This is why transformation is powerful. You look at a little child, a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother. 
and give the child one or two years the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from the baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying the baby is laughing where did that come from certainly not from the womb but where for god's sake did that come from when has the child associated cry with joy are we together now so you see the kind of world that we live in he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me and then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man i mean what he would do someone depriving you of your right and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the bible says in romans chapter 12 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of service verse 2 says and do not be conformed here it is do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern the system of operation that comes with this cosmos it says but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind and that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of god philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset there was a thinking there was a body of conviction that made jesus that flawless when he was on earth and he's saying allow the word let there means allow allow this body of beliefs allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding very important ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind when your understanding is darkened you are alienated from the potential the experience of the life of god it says through the ignorance that is in them transformation is very important there is almost no hope for an effective christian life for any believer who ignores transformation and it's important because africa is a very superstitious continent and in nigeria where people who are very spiritual we would we would opt for wise sayings we would opt for a mix of trado african christian approaches and would not settle down for the word of god that is balanced truthful intelligent and transforming and this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of christians that we have and all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of god and it's not entirely so because there is a species of man that god cannot produce so when you see that kind of man you know that there was a corruption somewhere hallelujah praise the lord the mind is very powerful i taught us about success that true success in the kingdom is not something that we do true success is what you attract by who you become this is very powerful there are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially spiritually they want to do things and there is a place of doing there is a place of action but action is only relevant when there is transformation success is what you attract by who you become there is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain it's impossible are we together you cannot see papa Ia deboe for instance at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish his transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you would think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works 
you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make we try to do things and the things we do are higher than who we are so the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels our mindsets success is a product of growth it's more than doing things god can tell you you're going to have five thousand members but you have to grow it's more than just prophecy there are ethics that you honor at every level of growth and as you continue to transit your results continue to change to reflect the change in you as you change your clothes will change as you change your honor will change as you change your communication your understanding as it's changing your relationships will change everything continues to change to reflect the changing person you don't go and look for friends you attract them by your growth are we together you don't go around hand picking people this is the this is the labor that god saved us from through transformation look how painful it is to go and select friends how do you know the person will not change tomorrow allow the wisdom of god to select them your assignment is to grow does not deep call on to deep when you grow it begins to change you cannot be wealthy and have poor friends it's not about driving them the law edits itself it edits your possibilities the moment there is that transition your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave you don't have to say i must i'm tired of this place no that's not wise grow there is a level to which you grow your one room will push you out and the laws of god will back your exit they remained in egypt until moses started bringing an information moses said thus said the god of the hebrews your 430 years is exhausted he didn't preach in one day they kept hearing it while they started believing an exodus there was there was the, no matter how bound they were they were forced out of the place listen it is frustrating this is why a fake life and oh dear god bless and help our generation gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time it was authorized to live and it must live there is no power in existence that can keep it with you if i bless you with one million your mind and your mind has not grown to that level your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth it's not the issue of a spirit of of, of uh, poverty no satan is an opportunist when he comes he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy satan does not come to a man with a default strategy his strategy is bespoke is made to your mindset he will study your mindset from it study your vulnerability and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down satan cometh to me but did not find anything satan comes to men and check where is darkness what gives me license what gives me access if your prayer life is on fire he can't attack your prayer life he will check your understanding of the word of god they are called rulers of darkness their domain is when there is ignorance are we together mm. the law of the mind when i learned this law it changed my life I knew that there had to be an easy way it's difficult to give God glory the way many people seek success your assignment is to grow when you grow from the intelligence of that growth you will be guided on what to do circumspectly the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise and it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy 
like following the path of growth rather than seeking things when you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you that's time wastage but when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life that's time redemption so the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise say i'm growing the third spiritual law we're doing a revision thank you jesus halus kapratuskia the law of faith let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch the law of faith numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 please numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me it's projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good the law of faith is a very powerful law the bible declares again and again in this kingdom i'm doing a revision that the just the believer one who has been justified in christ that you will live by faith the only assurance of your victory the only assurance of tomorrow the assurance of success is faith there is no earthly guarantee given to any man not by any uncle not by any auntie not by any certificate not by any platform the authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith and this is the victory that overcome even by faith are we together what is faith faith is your conviction your conviction your conviction the name given to your conviction about god and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out it's as simple as that but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able he has an ability and i know him i'm persuaded are we together very important come Sheun. look at this please now if i look at Sheun now and i say Sheun, i'm going to give you one thousand naira the first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks i am my ability my integrity everything comes under pressure at the instance of that word he would have to verify whether number one i have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira and then number two whether i have the ability i may have the willingness the integrity but not have the ability so god allowed his word so we can vet him he's not afraid of being vetted god is saying probe me probe my integrity i've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations so that your conclusion on reading this is that god is not a man that he should lie are we together now it's not something you just believe he tells you go through it i allow you to have this the chronicles of my integrity so that you will believe me when i say i can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes vet it did i not raise joseph did i not raise esther ah it's powerful to believe god there are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system um there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you thirty thousand. you will never rise you will never move listen if it is god he will prove himself faith powerful find a believer that has faith and understands faith now faith is not just blindly believing faith is conviction are we together and that conviction comes through understanding you have really understood god and his ways when you know where how you contribute in terms of your partnership your participation listen bible faith does not leave everything to god there is always man's role in that equation please understand this bible faith will never allow god to just do everything there is always the participation and your participation is your believing god and then subscribing to the terms the conditions that guarantee for that outcome this is where many believers continue to miss it faith is more than just confession 
Faith is more than just receiving, as important as they are. They are all equations in that, I mean, variables in that equation of faith. But Bible faith is not Bible faith until you find the condition allocated. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that the Lord thy God now watch this that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you condition if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord if thou shalt pay attention if you place value on the speakings of god if you place value on his ways his intelligence his methodology you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture you say in the name of jesus i'm exalted above all nations you are correct but if you stop there you will live a frustrated christian life there is a condition while you speak you release that word but more than that, you have to go back and find out. So, what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, do, do. Do, not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you are understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. You must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you when david stood before goliath he said you come to me with your bows and your spears but i come to you in the name of the lord god of heaven um uh, the 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 one the the one whom you have defied he was speaking to goliath you have to stand and look at life and say you may look like a mountain but faith deflates mountains it is true it is true Time will fail me, he says, to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun. It takes faith to subdue. Say in the name of Jesus, by the faith of God at work in me, I subdue every mountain don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely no 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 there is nothing special about challenges it is defeat that should be a surprise don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it and let the god of heaven who is not a man that should lie come and prove himself in your life every testimony here is faith the equation of faith completed trusting god please don't doubt god i know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on god we make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two one plus one plus god is any answer he says it should be any answer by what standard will you say he failed? If a house is my own, I can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance. It's my house. So you don't say because I entered here, yes, this is my house. 
you are a visitor anywhere i show you that the door is you follow there kai this god hmm. god can decide to say 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together this is god for you 10 years in one hallelujah the law of faith let's run faith is very important we have dealt with the law of faith here we have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective christian life the law of value Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before great men. This is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie. Sincerely, let me tell you, this is one of the, I, I, I can't use the word, truest scriptures. But this scripture you see, please have a lot of regard for it. The gift of a man truly can make room for him. It didn't say we'll show him where his room is. Until then, there is no space for you. The gift will make room for you. Like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space. And because of your honor for that visitor, the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room. So where there was no space for you, that your gift can come and say, what is going on here? The table of greatness, where is my space? Sorry, there's no space. No, it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne the gift of a man the gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness it's very important classic um story is the story of joseph genesis chapter 41 when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46 i don't want to go into it forgive me i'm rushing because we're just this is a revision series i'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom these are the truths we engage if you don't engage this you will fail i tell you sincerely they are not opinions they are not doctrinal perspectives when jesus came he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom it's it's important that we understand the methodologies of god it's not the discourse it's not an invention of one man please understand this J jeremiah 6 i believe verse 16. let's go there and then we'll return here jeremiah 6 16 the bible says to ask for the ancient part it says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old parts wherein is the good way it says when you find it walk therein and ye shall find what rest another word for rest is sabbath the sabbath of a man comes the bible says labor to enter your rest that labor is not a labor in the flesh it's a labor of understanding 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 that there is a belief system there is a construction when you hold the keys of the kingdom they can bring you in experience to your sabbath so two people all saved by god can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results and the difference is not the love of god for them for the same lord is rich unto all the difference is their understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but he shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so your destiny is not just left to god how can i lie sharia whatever will be will be those wise sayings are poisonous are we together the law of value very very powerful you will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings 
Your value decide who decides who pursues you. It is true. And who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward. God designed life to operate based on a reward system. There's no sentiments to it. Life operates based on a reward system. That means that no matter how bad my background is, no matter how bad it was, there is a bailout system. I can be valuable. I can find my way out of every nonsense in life. It has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you. It's a principle backed up by God's own integrity. When you discover and you develop problem-solving abilities, when you become fruitful, when you become productive, it's impossible to be ignored. Regardless of tribal affiliation, regardless of sentiments, regardless of age and gender, the world does not have too many people who are valuable. Please understand this. Potentially, we all are. But in experience, there are few people per territory. You can, you can do a random sampling. There are few people per territory who are really valuable. So it's impossible to be ignored. It's like holding bright light in a very dark night. How could you be ignored? I show you what will take away mediocrity from your life. It's impossible to be ignored. You may ignore my background, that's all right. You may not like my persona, that's all right. But the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you, and I will never settle for less. I know there's more that's found in you. There is more, there is more than a weak and a mediocre life, there is more than a life of just getting married, having children, and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life. There is more than that. There is a life of meaning and glory and beauty. He has called us into glory and virtue. He has called many sons into glory. Where your life becomes an influence for his majesty. Your life becomes an inspiration to a generation. More than just food to eat. More than a little house here and there. I have one house, two cars, one estate, one business, a wife, my children, and that's it. That's a mediocre life. There's more than that. Are we together? The Bible says that you are the light of the world. Jesus is teaching here now. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. It says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. He says, you are the light of the world. Then he says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon who you are and the works of your hands your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder one wonder connecting to another when people think they have exhausted a dimension here you come like the eagle another page god does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity no it's a very poisonous proposition he desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. 
And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life, but just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causeth us always to triumph. Are we together? Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so much. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Hmm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. Being an Igbo person gives you. Being a Northerner gives you. Being a Middle Belt, a, South, a Southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise, people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background, but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me, but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. It said, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God. When God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer that was a light bearer an effulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Abba! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. 
you know and this are a world of arrogance even one minute to a man falling inside a pit he will act as if he still has control let me tell you the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church it will be impossible the church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are who are close within a religious sect no the social economy will see the intelligence of god was it not prophesied by prophet micah that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will flow to it they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways it says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation don't give yourself cheap to life just because culture just because your past just because your failures have concluded about you shake that off and know that there is a way oh rejoice not over me my enemies mm -mm. while they were discussing the death of jesus he had resurrected and was on the throne please sit down the law of value be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored the earth has too many people for you to be ignored 7.2 billion is a lot of people a territory can ignore you but not the entire earth we will all be great and the greatest part is we will all know ourselves it's true you will not be great just by intention there is a ladder that knowledge provides one step after another we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation it will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. next law we're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power there are mysteries in the kingdom these are the keys please understand this please understand this the next key that i want to teach us is what i call you know it the mystery of exemption ah. that there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture, officially, was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel are we together and that when the angel of death saw the blood he would pass over that is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you passing over is a possibility in this kingdom the bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side he said none shall come nigh thy dwelling but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked let me tell you the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you forget about your current result just focus on believing it sometimes when you believe certain things at the point of believing your results will negate it but just continue remember the things that are seen are temporal it is the things that are unseen superimpose your possibilities your life don't sit down and say now that i'm talking am i not broke mm -mm. 
for our light afflictions the bible says which is but for a moment it says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal meaning a possibility exists for them to change exemption man can be exempted and i've shared with us that there are three keys basically number one is the mystery of praise that praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men praise praise i'm just touching it we're not going into all of the details praise one of the the, the mysteries of exemption requests that should not be granted are granted it was a young lady who danced before herod danced before herod until a prophet's head went he prophesied but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said what do you want and was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom and she advised her wicked mother who said the head of John the Baptist and the head of John the Baptist went there are things that should not happen that you can make happen and there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening praise when you praise God it's called perfected praise praise that is intentional Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. He says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horse is and his rider. Not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horse is and his rider has been thrown into the sea cheap victories through praise it was in the days of jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them and he said look this one is not you find it in second chronicles chapter 20. there's no time to read everything and they raised their voices and began to sing you are good and your mercy endures forever and there was fight in the camp of the enemy they began to kill one another and the last person helped kill his brother men were going for war and they went with gold and silver and when the army came they found prepared blessings please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding you can dance your way out of tears you will look stupid until the results justify you you can sing and shout Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Praise. You exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice sacrifice is very powerful psalms 50 and verse 5 i'm just doing a quick recap we have all these teachings you can go and listen to them gather unto me my saints the bible declares they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice by sacrifice by sacrifice there are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered sacrifice the Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings 
and that night not the next day that same night the lord came to him and said solomon ask what he will and then he asked not for the life of his enemy but for wisdom to govern the people and he said you did not ask for the life of your enemy nor riches nor this because of that i will give you an understanding heart he said and with it i will give you riches i will give you wealth and honor and so on and so forth sacrifice is powerful unfortunately i know that it has been abused you know especially by women of god who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abuse the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bathwater. sacrifice is powerful you can sow your way out of realms you can sow your way into realms sacrifice that is done with understanding not manipulation not coercion As a testimony one time when when we started koinonia i think the the first year or so we're just about a year or so i remember one time the beginning of that year the lord gave an instruction to carry everything literally everything zero dot zero zero carry everything and so and i heard it i knew it was god i said lord thank you for an opportunity for lifting not thank you for being a robber god does not rob as we carried that seed and sowed in seven days seven days god did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what god did but it's a is a mother of miracles to this ministry even financially greed is your partnership with failure when you are greedy you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle please hear what i'm saying this is true greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm you can pray your way you can give your way sow your way and then invoke the mercy of god and so on and so forth let me talk about two more and we'll pray oh dear but I hope you are getting these things because let me tell you if you understand these principles that I show you your life will become an unending wonder it's true it's not a lie they are not opinions hallelujah the next law spiritual law the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us these are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships please understand this everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships we are relational beings in fact the faith work starts with a relationship a relationship with jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and David said, ah, I answer amen for this for even myself. And David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Not for his sake. 
for Jonah because you are related to Jonathan. I want to change your life. Next verse. And there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Mm. He's a son, but he's a son that cannot help himself. Next verse. And the king said unto him, where is he? And he said, behold, he's in Laodiba and so on and so forth. Verse 5, let's hurry up. I just want us to get the, the central message. And the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir and the son of Amiel from Laodiba. 6. Now when Mephibosheth, ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the spirit of God. Men can show men kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah. None like you. What are you turning to say? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. We're talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Our Son in power. Our God. Our God. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No, it's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9, we're reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, Please listen. I have given unto thy master's son, all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen Thou, dear 
therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him now listen and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat but Mephibosheth thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table and now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants didn't the king see his sons Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants yet they sent him although he had sons they said go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny rejoice not over me my enemies there is a system of advantage i may be limited but in this kingdom there are keys everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen Listen. and then Ziba why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons that means when a man is not your destiny helper he will watch you like this and you see him every destiny helper has his own children he has his own relatives he did not even say Ziba take two of your sons let me help you while I help this guy every disadvantage you don't take blemish before the king did you not read malachi you call me a king why do you bring me animals with blemish the guy already called himself a dog the king said it doesn't matter may you find the man anointed by god to lift you please hear what i'm saying you can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom please sit down we'll find somewhere to pray Mephibosheth there are four kinds of destiny helpers let me run it quickly in two minutes there is a teaching please get it number one they are called divine connectors Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah, but there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check but he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision divine connectors number two the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access these ones are people who have influence they are gatekeepers of industries halus caprando kashubria who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. There are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there because their stewardship is a covenant they are not even there because of what they did they are sitting on another covenant that god's integrity must protect although they are unbelievers 
Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel because he will always remember Abraham my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth in a desert land yet they are prosperous because God is a covenant keeping God so when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God forget that they are rebelling while they are there their children will pay for it but for that time no your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor and you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results what I tell you is called spiritual intelligence it's true. these are the kinds that you need favor influence did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph he just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh they were allowed to serve their God and Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest Potiphar, the priest of On as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere and he still gave him as a wife and in, in the land of Goshen the people can't it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph that was when their oppression started so even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by God you will see a big church of 5,000 people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people I have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of God but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a I mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people I'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer Lord send me gifted people make my life easy you have a business because of scarcity you, you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so, so 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 person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person, i'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing ceo and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted i pray this prayer all the time and i tell you sincerely and i i i, I stand broken before god to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people the workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people has saved me the stress of any other thing I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word please you need gifted people in your life otherwise life will be hard you can't do everything by yourself hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth the midwife that threw Mephibosheth she was called a midwife what happened that she threw the guy down do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child Lord send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ and the last of all very quickly they are called burden bearers 
the last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers during the your down times in life you must pray that god will send you people who don't love you because of the throne they love you because of who you are the flat tree of success can kill people can clap when there is a crown on your head but when you are at the cross you will need burden bearers and jesus was on his way to golgotha the bible records and he was he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die he would have died there and if he died there there would be problem because he needed to die a cause not just to die a man cause is the man that hangs upon the tree he says that the blessings of abraham might come upon the gentiles that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so if he died on the way that's not redemption that's obituary and then they called on a burden bearer called simon of cyrene the black man the nigger and he, the guy gladly carried the cross let me tell you i pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like david in the cave of adulam the bible says mighty men they came to david they saw him hiding and they've said you will become our king it's not everybody that is looking for results there are people who will stay with you as the landlord is driving you they will stand there and say no i will not run away men are selfish by design please every leader hear me you need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers men and women who can cry with you they can say Hosanna but when you're on your way to the cross you will only see Mary and John there burden bearers there are men of God when they are, we start building project everybody just runs away when the building is completed people come and dance again to acknowledge God burden bearers even the disciples ran away but there was a woman who said let me risk my life I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body I hope you know that was why she went she carried to go and purify his body what if she died on the way a burden bearer will be like roof to Naomi your God will be my God and your people will be my people many people when they are in their dark days they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well but you must pray for burden bearers there is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say pastor i love you i will stand by you all the way are we together i'm robber steal from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen there are burden bearers again i thank god for the privilege you know many men of god for many men of god their greatest fear in fact many successful people their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad i tell you god has taken that fear out of my life god has given me not only trusted people not only gifted people not everybody old but there are people god has put in my life that i know if they put a gun today they will stand and take that bullet lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing that's why I will lift up my voice. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me 
Listen, you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound. Listen, listen, please sit down. We'll pray shortly. Listen, the Bible talks, Jesus himself was teaching and Jesus spoke about a man and robbers were laid that man. Are we together? And he was on the, a priest came and a priest saw him and left going to church. A Pharisee came and left him. But there was a man called Good Samaritan. No name. Good Samaritan. He was identified by where he was coming from, his territory, and his character. Good Samaritan. And the man sat down. He bandaged this man. Took him to a private inn to keep him. And said, I will take care of him. I'm about to go and do something when I come back whatever the cost is that's a burden bearer that's not an advisor there are people who will come and see your child your daughter your son and look at things work and say ah, what is this you mean he has been writing wired for five years I will conduct a personal tutorial when you see a burden bearer you will think they charm them they will carry your own load on their own head you are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer you have entered the Sabbath the person may not be a millionaire he will be collecting hundred thousand and depositing sixty thousand say this is my contribution there are real burden bearers not everyone on earth is wicked you have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you you select your possibilities in prayer This ministry by the grace of God has been privileged to have burden bearers men and women who are raised by the spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but I've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms. That is all they do. As if God did not call them themselves. Burden bearers. It is painful to be alone. It is painful to be alone. There are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children. They had just five or six of their own children. But they raise up to 50 children of other people and these people in old age will be in the hospital are we together now looking for one million for a treatment and all those 40 people they raise not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life. A burden bearer in your life. I've had the privilege by the grace of God in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and I'm happy doing it. A burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping. That's his assignment. To insist till you laugh. Why are you about to go away? So I'm in 200 level. My father just died. My mother just died. They don't sit down and say, I will from the same village. That's not a burden bearer. It's your, what was your father? Did he know my father? Mm. I stand and I say this. Come. Every semester, receive this school fees. For, give me your account number. I will be putting 10, 10,000 until you graduate. And when you are about to graduate, let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers that's why they don't announce we have 
a project of you know god designed men to be burden bearers this crying on stage for money every week no a real burden bearer will sit down and find needs why is this pastor's shoe removing that shoe would the pastor would never wear that shoe again had this shoe no no it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we noticed that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer May your wife be your burden bearer husband. And may your husband, may, may, what's the next one now? May your husband be a burden bearer wife. Be, because, listen, let me tell you, if your spouse is not a burden bearer, you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital. You've seen these things happen. Some persons are in the hospital, some people are selling their property, hoping that they will die. And then they later come and leave. It's, it's when they are alive. They now find out that half of the estate had gone. In expectation that you would die. Is that a spouse? This is why we will continue by the spirit of God. Listen to me. Let me just digress for 10 seconds. This is why we will continue to guide people. You know, sometimes people make very, very poor marital choices carelessly these are the things to think about father is this person a burden bearer not for now for the days that come there are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man he can't talk he can't walk yet she's laughing they say say something about your husband say even if we return in this life i want him to still be my husband that's a burden bearer my generation hear me open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life burden bearers In my life, I have seen this. There are men of God who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there. I am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world. And you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said, look, this and that and that and burden bearers. The Lord gave the word. He said, great is the company of them that published it. If you don't have a burden bearer, you will pay for everything. The one who will help you drive your car, you will pay. The one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay. Because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you please just go live your life leave this old woman and Ruth said no way no way mama I'm not going anywhere it, that means even if my future is ruined let it be at the instance of our relationship your God will be my God your people will be my people our time is gone ah. can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes, it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me, you will go home after the grace. Make <laughs> Make him a, 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 
mystery second only to the law of encounter is the greatest truth I have found the law of honor the mystery behind the sudden rising of people like a charm a man just evaporates and you don't see him again and the only place you find him is above honor what is honor honor is the discerning please listen five minutes and we're done honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and then if need be honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him out, for their uniqueness honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people please if you can i recommend that you listen to my teaching that i did at the king's court rccg the king's court listen to it i spoke on the book of esther The book of Esther starts in a very interesting way. Please lend me five minutes. We're still at that. The Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man, a king called Ahasuerus. The Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his, his might. And then the Bible tells us about a woman called Vashti. Are we together? So, the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman. The king calls for Vashti to come. To come and, you know, show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends. And Vashti refused. When she refused, the king, being a very good man, he kept quiet with the issue. But then the advisors of the king said, uh, 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 uh. this woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman. If you permit this dishonor, our wives and our women will start the same thing too. Do something about it. And Vashti is banished. Are we together? That means everything was in place in a palace. The throne is still there. The treasures are still there. But dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two everything still in place intelligence is there the security there her man is there but one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene three a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called shushan are we together now the little niece of a gatekeeper called mordecai is fetched and brought before the king oh no she honored the man and she came honor and favor works peri pursue there may not be time to talk about favor but if you if you if you practice honor automatically you will find favor favor is the reward for honor are we together so when she came there the bible says in esther chapter 2 please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17 that there was a grace for favor that was upon her now when the turn of esther came and so on and so forth she went to her guy required from him the last sentence and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her favor is a grace that works with sight when the, when the grace for favor is upon you only a blind man will ignore blessing you 
provided there is a man that has the eye that can see they are compelled to bless you verse 17 and the king loved esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but her surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Are we together? And then when you read on, you will find out that a lot began to happen. And she declared a fast because of the threat of her man, his plot to destroy the people of God. And she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer the scepter and invited and said what should i do a wise woman look at honor honor is a weapon in that in the book of esther there is no priest in the book of esther there is no prophet in the book of esther there is no apostle in the book of esther there is no war there is only a woman but she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor she honored her man to his grave honor is a weapon it not only lifts it can kill a wise a foolish woman would have told the king and said king her man wants to destroy us will you watch your beautiful bride go see that but a wise woman when he gave her an opportunity her honor she discerned his mood and she said oh king I want to give you what the first wife didn't give you it was her not honoring you that took her out of the place grant me the opportunity to present a banquet and the king said finally I find a woman who understands that with all humility I am king over 127 provinces talk about my province first before my request don't before your don't come before me and request talk about the province don't ignore the achievement it's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest, then your needs come later. So when you go to this king called your father, when you start, it is hallowed be your name. Then thy kingdom come. Then your will, O king, be done on earth. Then when you are done, then give us this day our daily. It's a formula. The king's interest first before your needs. So Esther prepares a banquet and then notice she also requested, please let her man also come. When you fight a great man's friend too soon, even if it's your enemy, you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally her man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it he said do it again he said with all pleasure my king honor remember somebody is dying no but honor is the one killing the person and then another banquet is prepared and then the Bible says she prepared a feast called the Feast of Wine. That was where the whole thing came. The Feast of Wine. When the king drank wine and was happy, he now said, okay, what is it? And he said, oh king, I have a plea. Say it, wine. You wait until wine comes. There is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people. Who is that? That her man. Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be a problem. The man went to the, king, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah! You are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. It, it's just doom. 
And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. Her man, didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. Her man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies Haman's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Please hear me. Honor is powerful. Dishonor is dangerous. There is only one reason why men fail in life. Carry this message. Dishonor to God dishonor to men dishonor to principles one more time dishonor to god dishonor to men and dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time i have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister i will never never dishonor the man of god dishonor their protocol dishonor their system i will walk within what is provided it's called honor it's not weakness honor your father and your mother that your days may be long i tell you why many young people are dying like chickens dishonor 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 The law of honor has changed my life. The law of honor has lifted me, lifted this great ministry. You can earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. When they say mention your streams of income, don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry. Say honor. A wise man will clap for you. Honor is powerful. It can change your life. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Honor is powerful. I continue to walk this law like a chess. And you walk this law, there is no power in existence. I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry. I truly love them and I honor them. We prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way, a token of honor. Honor is very powerful. Let me tell you this. When God makes men like you, no matter what is done a, within the context of that generation, you have entered your Sabbath. It is not enough for God to like you alone. The man he uses must like you. God can tell Pastor Femi, come Pastor Femi, I'm rounding up. God can tell Pastor Femi to bless me. He can reject that instruction. While he's struggling with obedience, I'm suffering. I will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed, but it will remain in the dream. God agreed, a man disagreed, I'm paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor. Is what we continue to teach in this ministry please hear me you are part of this spiritual family one of the signature traits of your life must be honor don't talk to people anyhow you see elderly people you insult everybody huh no an elderly woman is carrying something mark please can i help you oh i'm a man of god so what demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence don't dishonor our children you see my children here even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their clothes. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said, these people are just lucky. All these people. How can a young man live? If not, uh, I hear your father was this and that. Is it dishonor? Is why many people are poor and broke. 
they see every rich man and just think he was dash he was luck no every successful man especially a successful young man you know one time we were traveling it somewhere and i sat close to someone and i was sleeping it was so bad you know this kind of sleep you are going like this all around because you are tired and then you know the person was trying to ah you're a young man what kind of sleep is this i just looked at him and i nodded my head I said you see this is the kind of thing you are talking about you are not asking why i'm seated where you are seated at my age it's, it's not it's, it's not i don't mean to be sarcastic I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen, please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding result. Listen to it. One day, get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job. Don't say it's my younger brother, it's my younger sister, it's my. When I was in, in, in SS, uh, um, SS3, he was all those, all those superstitious, trado African approach to life. You, you, you will be punished again and again. I have a great deal of respect for people who honor me. Sincerely. If you, if you. If you trivialize what I represent, I will not fight you, but I will never prophesy to you. You will not be, you will not be close. You will not be around my life again because I'm going to waste my time. I don't love, I don't hate you. I will not do that. I will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old. No, I honor all men. Beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous to your growth. Not to flatter you. But please, if you have 127 provinces, it is not a bad thing to have a feast. O oh, Ahasuerus. 127 provinces is not a kiosk. Let us learn to practice honor. Some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents. Your father is a prof. Your mother is a prof. You are there sweeping the ground in life. You can say, Daddy, Mommy, please. Whatever I have done, whatever needs to come on my head how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare i'm telling you this there are parents who never went to school but they raised 10 children not one of them is an arm robber you think it's just there is a grace there one child is about to kill you go and meet them buy something they like and say please place something on my destiny when I was about to start ministry, I met my father and my mother. And I told them, I said, I told my mother, I said, you are a pastor's daughter. Your father was a pioneer. My grandfather was the first cooking president. The first cooking president. And is that pioneer grace I want? I knelt down. When you are too big to honor, you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor there are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but I've helped the protocol to see just be open. Be open. I will see how I will adjust anything. Not that you stand and say, I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and crash down. Honor is powerful. You are the one who loses when you dishonor men. We have to stop here. Teach your children to honor. Don't see a stranger and come and slap him. You spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say, I did not give birth to this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must change. You must become like your father. Pamper your child to have something, some, produce something that would destroy you.
there are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague they are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closes towards you i never find a man that carries something i need and i will keep quiet with it now one day god will give you an opportunity to see how i honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret i had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room. I was granted the opportunity and the tour, and I said, please grant me the grace. I said, what is there? Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. When I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to David Yonggi Cho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yonggi Cho called him to come and pray for him. Ah. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, no, I know that I will pray for you, but I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? Yes. The gentleman may not have money but he has character. It's a grace and it's transferable. The person seated next to you, no matter what happens, there is a covenant of supplies. Quarter to shame, help must rise from somewhere. You think it's not an issue to honor? Some of our mothers and fathers seated here, the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives. They can just look at you and say, bless you and that's it. And many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it. We never rise, we never shine, and our light never comes. Please rise up on your feet. I apologize for taking our time. Hold hands with someone. We're going to pray. These are the ways of the kingdom. Just one prayer and we are done tonight. I apologize, our time is up. I don't know which of these laws I have shared with you. I don't know which of these mysteries, please hear me. I don't know which of these spiritual mysteries you have compromised on. But it's time to cry to God. I have said, there are many of them. This is a revision. Just come hold him, please, so that which of these mysteries that you need to know which one am i missing don't say things are not working in my life nothing works till you engage it there has to be something you are missing maybe it is dishonor maybe you are not putting your faith to work are we together maybe your mind you are trying to acquire things in your life that has not come by growth please whatever category lift up your voice in two minutes let's cry to god we came to church tonight. Church is a place of transformation. The Lord has declared by His Spirit that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. My life is changing prophesy to yourself i'm rising by the spirit by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus
one minute and we're done outside pray online please pray the keys of the kingdom the mysteries by which we reign enforce us of divine possibilities upon the life of a man Hallelujah. Father, we desire to bear fruit. We love you and we want to attain unto that height, that image, that stature. We want to be a people very spiritual. We want to be a people very transformed. We want to not only be ambassadors of the kingdom, but we also seek to be agents of national transformation. That our lives will not be a nuisance to civilization. Our lives will not be a nuisance to any society. We want to be prosperous. We contend for kingdom influence. We want to walk in superior dimensions of the gifts of the spirit. Quicken our understanding, oh God. You have brought us through this revision again to upgrade our lives to insist that we get what works i pray that you break every stony heart in the name of jesus christ give us a heart of flesh give us a heart that is compliant in the mighty name of jesus christ father we decree and declare that we meditate on these things we give ourselves wholly to them and we declare that our profiting will appear unto all everyone who has come under this grace and this influence tonight is blessed in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you and we bless you in jesus name i pray yeah lord jesus we thank you for tonight oh what a privilege what a privilege father we thank you because you are faithful we bless your name for this opportunity again to be gathered together and to worship to learn to be built to be established in truth lord we thank you because you are faithful he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place. Sing it as a prayer. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your spirit tonight. Thank you for your leadership. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Walk up to 10 people, give them a big hug, welcome them tonight. Outside, make sure you participate. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around. Hallelujah. There are some of you, this is the moment you like. When we say hug one another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Very quickly, I'll just perform a function quickly and then we'll get to the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, now, as a few of you might have heard, on Tuesday, one of our dear sisters um, transited to glory. Praise the Lord. Um, she died in a motor accident and um, she was buried this morning. Praise the Lord. Our dear one, Sister Lillian Isa, 
the head of department of um, decorations. Praise the Lord. And um, we followed up with the family. We followed up with the um, members of the department. We thank God for one thing because the Bible says precious in the sight of God. Precious in the sight of God is the departure of his saints. We thank God because though a very short time I, when I was responding to the leaders I told them that she's gone to be with the one she spent her life serving. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians verse 4 when you begin to read from verse 13 the apostle says that I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning they that sleep that ye grief not hallelujah or that ye sorrow not really that's the word there is a difference between lamentation and the human expression of pain over a departure of someone but like I was teaching the leaders yesterday sorrow is a hopeless expression of frustration over the transition or the demise of one and the Bible says that is a law is a rule believers don't sorrow hallelujah she's she's been an instrumental blessing to us in the house lovely person and um, we thank God for the opportunity that we had with her around she was buried this morning in Kogi State and um, we're strong the members of the department are strong and it's my responsibility to perform this function we're going to this is just a tribute to her and we'll pay our last respect to her i want you to know that lillian is happily gloriously adorned with the jewel of honor that which is a symbol of spending her life in life and in death she cheated death hell and the grave praise the lord the bible says so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom it says if our hope is only in this life then we are all men most miserable so we bless the lord for the privilege of having her around her family members are strong we've been in touch with them the mother and the relatives are very strong and uh, in one minute i'd like us to please stand up everybody inside and outside just for a few seconds to pay our last respect to one of us our finest who has gone to join the cloud of witnesses may her gentle soul rest in perfect peace with the lord in jesus name amen and amen god bless you hallelujah praise the lord i by extension want to extend our condolence to different families those here and those who are following with us thousands and probably millions of people following with us online who have at one point or the other experience the departure of a loved one is humanly very painful when um, we lose loved ones and at times like that we draw our consolation from the word of God hallelujah while having my retreat in the course of the week the Lord gave me an instruction to teach us um, a few things that I'll be sharing with us and so I want us to please pay attention in the name of the Lord to what I'm about to teach us. Um, permit me to temporarily suspend the financial series. We'll continue next week so that I can just communicate that which God has put in my spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be teaching tonight on the biblical keys to longevity. Biblical keys to longevity. Please make sure you're writing. It's a very important teaching, especially at this time. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. 
You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing, You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the last time now, you are good, Lord. He is good, and His mercies are forever. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. The subject of death and the issue of longevity and um, the concept of life has for many years and centuries been a subject of debate and a subject of concern because it's something that seems to happen to the entire human race death is something that seems to have um, a power and a force that looks like it cannot be restrained when it comes upon a person or a family or a territory it seems to just take them and human beings have tried to negotiate with death and they found out that you cannot buy long life you cannot lobby yourself into long life and so that that inevitable reality of this system of death has forced mankind to respond in different ways others through fear others through all kinds of mechanisms and um, particularly for the church it's been a subject of concern is there a formula for long life is there a principle is there some sort of guarantee please pay attention tonight can a man actually make a bold claim about longevity or are we to just walk and hope that someday death will just come and whenever it comes it can take us this has been a great source of confusion in the body of Christ. There are those who are of the opinion that, um, you know, this is what the Bible says and this and that. And there are others who have all kinds of stories, you know, of well-meaning, loving believers, pastors, ministers of the gospel who have died. And um, in all kinds of things, sicknesses have claimed the lives of people accidents acts of terrorism and so on and so forth and so this the complexity of death is something that in spite of the civilization of mankind and the many centuries of evolution it's a question that has been at the heart of almost everyone what is the guarantee that this may not be my last night what is the guarantee that i can plan for 20 years and successfully execute it this has led many people, for instance, into being irresponsible because they feel there is no point laboring, going to school, paying the price, getting a job, getting married, having kids, and then dying and leaving people, and so on and so forth. And others have um, come up with all kinds of formula. I can tell you, even for ministers of the gospel, it's been a difficult subject um, to teach congregations because as a minister of the gospel you are exposed to all the sides of life you have to attend funerals 
you have to comfort families at the same time um, you will have to be there at baby the birth of new ones dedications marriages and all of that so on one side you have your members crying at the transition of one and then on one side they are celebrating the incoming of another on one side there is a divorce happening on another side people are celebrating the bliss of marriage so all of these these extremities make um the work of ministry particularly very difficult hallelujah and we must be able to draw strength from the truth of god's word so tonight as instructed by the lord i want to teach us certain things i want us to discuss on the subject of longevity to give us hope courage and to build faith in us say amen before i start like i said earlier on let me express my heartfelt condolence to many of us who have at one point or the other experienced the demise of a loved one i can tell you this that it is really really very painful there are people who have lost father others mothers others both parents others you know and if i'm to ask every one of us to come and hold the mic and say one or two things many of us may have tear dropping stories tragic memories of things that happened surrounded the death of our loved ones and so on and so forth and um the goal tonight is not to get us emotional the goal tonight is not to um create a lot of questions in our mind and create a platform for debate the goal tonight is an attempt to look from the vista of the word of god and draw up keys to be able to guide us and to show us like a compass that there is a pathway to longevity hallelujah praise the lord psalm 91 verse 16 you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever i am afraid i will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord I will trust in you trust in you so let the weak say I I am strong in the strength of the Lord he is your hand You always fill your heart with songs of deliverance whenever you are afraid you should trust in him that's what he expects you should trust in him Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share a few thoughts. Number one, the first thing I want us to know about let's start from jeremiah 29 let's start from there jeremiah 29 let's be fast there are lots of scriptures we're going to look at because i want to establish a few things 
Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Are we there? Okay. Want to read everyone is projected. This is the part that I want us to focus on tonight. To give you a what? An expected end. A predictable end. Please listen to me. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. These thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts of good. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any good report, if there be any virtue and, and any praise, he said, think on these things. And so God is saying, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. This is God speaking. And those thoughts are particularly designed to give you an expected end a predictable end not an unexpected end not an unpredictable end this is the word of the lord hallelujah he says i know the thoughts that i think towards you the thoughts that i think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end hallelujah Point number one. The first point I want us to get tonight is that God's desire and plan for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. God's desire and God's plan for us according to scripture is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please very quickly write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures god's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please everyone read one two read One more time this is the bible this is the truth of god's word it says for with long life will i give him did he say will i give him that means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity are you getting blessed it says for with long life Will I satisfy him? And in it, I will show him my salvation. Number two, Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. Please, media, you'll be really fast. You'll help us. There are lots of scriptures to look at. And all of them are important. We're establishing the first point tonight. That it is God's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Exodus 23 verse 26. 23, 26. Hallelujah. Everyone read. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of thy days. There is an appointment with long life. There is an appointment from the throne from eternity before you came and it says the number of your days i will fulfill it so that's the first point i want us to establish tonight and listen people i want you to realize that um, i'm a human being i understand that many of us are receiving this point with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of god's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to mourn the transition of our dear one but the bible says forever O oh lord thy word is settled a believer is not just one who has given his heart to the lord 
a believer is one who has submitted to the authority of god's word as the final say regardless of your experience this is what makes you a believer is you are not a believer just because you were born again you are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of god take precedence and become the final authority over your life say amen do you believe what i'm teaching you you must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven you are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband even if she does not like the way he's behaving even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage her covenant of being with him will force her to submit sometimes he may beat her he may be a foolish man but she has chosen as a submissive wife that i will submit to his authority and i will bear his son name that's what it means to be a believer to be a believer is not to love god when you can explain things to be a believer is that in the midst of your joy in the midst of your tears in the midst of your clarity in the midst of confusion regardless of what happens in your life the word of god stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life is god speaking to us are we growing as believers this is a very mature teaching tonight if you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of god above your life you will backslide and you will run away from god that's why we have many atheists today many of them were church children many of them were folks in baptist and presbyterian churches but their lives were surrounded by so much confusion and because they think that god has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds after a prolonged period of disappointment that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits and their conclusion is that god is a liar and their conclusion is that the bible is not true their conclusion is something is wrong there is a deceit somewhere but the bible says the lord is gracious and compassionate is slow to anger rich in love from everlasting to everlasting he says thou art god hallelujah it is god's desire for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest do you believe that point number two make sure you're writing point number two the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time the bible did not hide it from us it didn't leave it as a secret is clearly stated in the bible that it is possible that although this is the desire it is absolutely possible supported by scripture that a man can die before his time open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life this is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight but it will test your love for god the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time ecclesiastes 7 17 quickly ecclesiastes 7 17 and psalm 55 verse 23 we'll look at those ecclesiastes 7 17 the bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted not only can the life be cut short the bible shows us that someone's life can be added to and someone's life can be subtracted 7 17 ecclesiastes hallelujah Okay, let's just let's just turn while they're trying to help her. Okay. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read everyone. One to read.
Why should thou die before your time? We are still going to revisit this verse. It says, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou what? Die. It's a question. It's just the, the B part I want us to focus on. Why? It's a question. That means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions, the same way God designed for everyone to be prosperous, the Bible says that, um, how did he put it now? It says the proceed of the earth is for the profit in of all. But there are people today who love God and they are still poor. Is that true? There are people today who love God and cannot afford to feed their children. But it does not stop the fact that God is a loving God and he has shown a formula for prosperity. Why should thou die before your time? So the Bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time. Psalm 55 verse 23. 55 verse 23. Are we there? All right, go ahead and read everyone. Those outside, we apologize. Looks like they are not seeing the projection, but just follow us very carefully. One to read. Shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what? half their days they will not even live up to half their days now forget that he's talking about wicked people i'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added can be cut short can be multiplied can be divided can be subtracted this is the infallible word of god hallelujah so although God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest, the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Point number three. This is a hard one now. Receive grace to receive it. Ready? The Bible re reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. write it down the bible reveals that god is never behind us dying before our time isaiah 65 verse 20 hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah you have won it all for me Death could not hold you down You are the reason, Lord You're seated in majesty
the Bible reveals painfully but truly that God is never behind us dying before our time 65 verse 20 of Isaiah go ahead and read one to read nor an old man that had not what go ahead and read this is the prophet speaking the mind of God to the people of God he says there shall be no more infant of days nor an old man that had not sealed his days for a child shall die a hundred years old brothers and sisters the Bible says but as many as believed him he gave them power to become as many as believed him he gave them power to become hallelujah one more scripture Ezekiel 18 verse 32 Ezekiel go ahead and read one to read stop for what one more time one more time this is God speaking one more time read on do you believe this please listen 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 I'm a human being are you getting me I understand the reality I understand the pain I, I understand the gravity are you getting me of of uh, you will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families and this is consistent I have been to mortuaries I have prayed for people we have lost loved ones in far and near and all kinds of things have happened but I choose to be a believer I choose to be a believer I lift my hands in worship as I sing Praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Say it who? Say it, prophet Ezekiel saith the lord god wherefore as a result of the above turn yourselves and leave ye next point this is a very serious one and i want us to pay attention to it ready satan comma the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys john 10 10 please satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys write this before we look at the scripture in continuation he has strategies through which he achieves this mission Satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys he has strategies through which he achieves this mission continue writing topmost among the strategies are sicknesses, suicides, accidents. Write it down. Top 
foremost among these strategies are sicknesses you can write afflictions too suicide accidents these are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives these are his most common strategies 95 percent 95 percent of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities suicides accidents of all sorts fire all kinds of things destruction john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission the thief cometh not meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this to steal and to kill and to destroy but jesus the son of the living god said i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly the thief satan there are many names that he's given in the bible he's given the serpent he's given the dragon he's given the thief he's called the accuser of the brethren he's called the adversary he's called the destroyer and satan has a strategy please let me have your attention now satan has a strategy there is a series by the grace of god on angels that we are going to be teaching subsequently and under that series of angels i'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels and we are going to examine this man or this entity called satan praise the lord i want us to look very carefully in that series there are a few things about satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits satan is not the most dangerous there are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain they were deliberately not released because the bible says if they are released even the elect will not stand the question is at what point were they bound and what did they do hallelujah when you begin to read don't turn there the book of ezekiel 28 the bible begins to speak of an ancient king We don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels look up many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels no no the word angel comes from the greek word angelio and it means a messenger let me tell you a few things look up please when ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called lucifer the Bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms. Is that true? Is, are, are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? It raises up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre and says, Thou which subdued nations talked about the making of satan and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things i think it's important we get this look look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point do 
during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an sug president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what i'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what i'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious capon is still lingering around abu are you getting what i'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what i'm saying he's an illegal occupant he's not a student but he has refused to leave that territory watch out for him he has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students u61 u62 u60 whatever till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of abu are you hearing what i'm saying that abu that's why when you measure it you find out that you are young but they tell you abu is 50 years whereas you are just four years are, are you getting my analogy is it making sense to you when he was the student he was not the most notorious student he was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history there are other notorious students cultists that were driven away are you getting what i'm saying but it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university now watch this let me tell you something i don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us but we'll have that series by the grace of god did you know that angels were once mortal beings are you getting what i'm saying now there was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth their dispensation ended and the ones who are with christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation just like imagine that jesus comes now i hope you know when jesus comes our dispensation is ended but the program of god still proceeds we do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas but we know the bible tells us there is a there is an age to come and there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so i guarantee you we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization but not the last as far as creation as far as as advancement as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know who knows maybe in another dispensation we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of god if allowed and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of god in that dispensation they will call us angels i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Now watch this. When we get to heaven, there will not the Bible does not record the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven. Is that true? So if 
in the earth in my earth life for instance this was my wife these were our children when we get to heaven we all become brothers and sisters are you getting what i'm saying we all become brothers and sisters i can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants and they can look at me and say wow who is this strange being but they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life it is this aberration that was that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation this is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said forget the people you are seeing now they have been before listen the dispensation before our own there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them there was nothing called invisible and visible that concept did not exist are you getting my point the dispensations before us you could access the heavens and access the earth now it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning so adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation we never had the opportunity to see what we could do for instance there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction they recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if adam did not fall and eve would have had the opportunity because he would still would have given birth you understand he would have given birth in his perfected state we would have seen the son of adam a womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature that's why in all of the dispensations is only our dispensation that brought jesus the son of the living god to come and die please let's continue that's for another time i'm just trying to show you that the one you call satan lucifer he was once a king in a dispensation hmm. the king of Tyre that ruled upon nations that's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be are you getting me now those spirits together with satan were the brains behind the building of the tower of babel they were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was that was why solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. geography today geography they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth they have found ancient castles did you know that there was a dispensation where where we are standing now was water not land the same way that place where is the mount of ararat where the the ark of noah rested where is it in the earth today we know everest to be the highest where is mount ararat where are the golds where is the temple of solomon that was built with pure gold you mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find dust of gold let me tell you most of them are still intact they are buried in the sea because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the hebrew word tohu wabohu is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth 
is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments. I'm saying all of this to let you know that Satan has a history. The strength of Satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits. The strength of Satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit. Are we blessed? Very quickly. Keys to long life. The first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest. They all complement themselves. You don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go. No. There are keys. There are keys. Number one, the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking, choosing, releasing words of life. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. And then we'll look at Proverbs 18, verse 21. Psalms 34, 12 to 14, and then Proverbs 18, verse 1. The first key to long life is to speak it. The first key to long life is to choose it. The first key to long life is to release it hallelujah ready look up let's read psalm 34 verse 12 one to read what man is he that desireth what life and loveth what many days that he may see good read on keep what there is a relationship stop between your tongue its communication and your life the bible says who is he that desire long life it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what speaking guile 14 depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the emphasis is 12 and 13 who is he koinonia that desires long life i don't die yo. the bible says who is he that desires long life don't just laugh about what i'm saying because whether you think you are joking or not the bible says and let it not be said before an angel i made a mistake who is he that wants to activate longevity it says keep the please go to verse 13 13 13, 13. it says keep thy tongue from what and your lips Keep your tongue. I know many of you have said, Kai, people are beg, they are exaggerating. Why do you want to speak? Please be real. You'll be real in the earth way, you will die like a chicken. Your reality must be the word. It says, I am the way, I am reality, I am absolute reality. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18:21. can we read proverbs 18 verse 21 one to read what will they eat the fruit of what no 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 it's in your bible it says they that love it shall do what death and life this is Solomon, a man who received wisdom from God. He's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to. And he said, in my exploration of spiritual mysteries, I found something. Death and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit there. hallelujah are you blessed the bible says i set before you this day blessing and cursing is that true death and life here's my suggestion i can't force you but this is my suggestion choose life that you may live not wish it choose life koinonia 
choose life that you may live are you still a believer choose life that you may live choose life I set before you blessing and cursing I set before you death and life but this is my advice for you choose life I speak life Oh my brother I speak life Head and not tail You will prevail I speak life Don't be the fight For your Everybody say after me, I choose life. Outside, can you shout it? I choose life. Those standing at the back, the back there, can you say, I choose life? Don't let the devil tell you, I hope you know what you're saying. Say it. I choose life. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Conquer fear. I choose life. When you speak, you release it. This is a voice activated planet nothing happens until sound is released i choose life send it to the atmosphere i choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow i choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen jesus said behold i jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth i stand at the door of your heart and i keep knocking i cannot enter until your will permits me as mighty as jesus is he respects the will of man how much more satan jesus the son of the living god the resurrected christ the eternal one stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years if that man refuses he goes to hell but he was knocking so what do you think makes you think that satan just steps into your heart it's called deception this is the foundation of witchcraft it paints a picture that is not real it makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to have wreck havoc in your life say it again i choose life say it again i choose life Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? Say, Lord, let this revelation, me. Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say did they speak like that say satan you are a liar the lord rebuke you i choose life hallelujah are you blessed tonight right very quickly everybody key number two to longevity the fear of the lord the fear of the lord biblical key number two to longevity under the word fear write reverence reverence the fear open bracket reverence of the lord proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 Proverbs 10 27. Proverbs 10 27. Everyone read. One to read. The fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence for God. Respect for Him. Honor for Him. 
and his ways and what he represents prolongs days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened the bible says the fear of the lord there are two indexes given in the bible to measure the fear of the lord in a man's life number one obedience to his commands and number two service in the house of god obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the lord obedience obedience oh i love him i obey him proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 to 11 i just want to praise you i lift my hands to say i love you you are everything to me and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name on high. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Verse 11 For by me days shall be what? And the years of thy life shall be increased. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah. He said go and tell Hezekiah you will not recover from that sickness you will die and Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said oh Lord remember how I have walked diligently before you and the Lord sent Isaiah again he said uh -uh, uh -uh. I remember my faithfulness and he went back and said the Lord said I have added for by me Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied and the years of his life shall be increased obedience and service when we talk to people about obeying the principles of God many people think that I can live my life the way I want longevity brothers and sisters hear me don't let westernization deceive you longevity is tied to your fear of the Lord service there are so many people seated here inside and outside you're not serving in any unit you're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom i shall not die but live to declare the works of the lord amen that's a scripture there you will live to declare you will live to promote you will live to frontier his kingdom let me tell you this my passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives is to create a sense my passion is to institutionalize god consciousness in people to make it an institution that everything in your life brothers and sisters is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda i don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not i can tell you an assignment start serving diligently in the house of god don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of god are just weak people who are desperate for husband say kai yourself eh? the way you are behaving don't let anyone cheat you there are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself hallelujah when five minutes without your breath you are gone it doesn't matter what your agenda is it's over the greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving god that's how you cheat death that's how you cheat the grave that's how you cheat death you don't cheat death by being afraid of it you cheat death by serving god victorious in life and victorious
glorious in death. Paul says, for for me to live is Christ. And if I die, it is still gain. There is no loss. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, the Lord is speaking to you. You are living your life as young as you are. You think you are too busy. There are many of you outside. As you are looking at my face, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight. And saying you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to. When will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life? Say, I'm not a man of God, I'm a pilot, so what? That my life be offered, oh God, on the altar of sacrifice. That I will serve you. I told God, this is all I do with my life. I don't have plan B. When I wake up in the morning, your kingdom come, oh God. That's all I do. Are you getting blessed? Service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for God. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best with all my life. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. Sing one more time from your heart. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it. As though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands. You go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week. And there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God. There, there's no service for the kingdom. It's not part of their lives. They come and they warm the bench. And smile around. And you tell them, are you serving? Any believer that is not serving in a church. Not serving in a group. Your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom. You don't deserve to live. He says, I shall not die but live. There is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom. God will kill a nation to preserve that man. I travel all the time. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? Tomorrow we are on our way again to be there. All the time. I've seen all varieties of accidents. I've seen all kinds of things. I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations. We have met armed robbers. We were going to, um, when we were going to Ogbomosho, our flight was cancelled. We had to charter a car to take us by road. We left about 4.30 in the morning. Just coming out of Abuja, Abaji, going towards, just entering the routes to go towards Kogi. And we told somebody reversing they were armed robbers brothers and sisters this gentleman speaking to you i'm not a fool are you getting what i'm saying i'm educated but i want to tell you something the fear of the lord can prolong the days of a man that you spend your life serving god during the days of our fathers the popular song is lord here am i send me right now we are saying lord here am i give me i have come i finally arrived to collect see let me tell you don't just laugh if you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your christian experience you will be unfruitful in the kingdom i want to stand before my maker I can only imagine what it would be like. Ah, what's the song? 
You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine That on that day when I stand before him When we are finally done And we have conquered the earth Depopulated the kingdom of hell and turn the hearts of many to righteousness that through faith after we have subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation and say Lord I am ready and you appear before him to be absent in the body the apostle says is to be present with the Lord and he looks at you and says well done you tried and they take on that crown and you see all the Matthias saying we watched you all the while while you were in that crusade we watched you while you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils the family in heaven was watching for some of us while you were roaming around gossiping and all that was your passion was oh god husband time is going god said we, we were watching you too i am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord I am so glad you came. We were in your life a few weeks ago. And when we went there, the organizer of the, the campus crusade, when he met me, I saw the way he was saluting me. And I said, I was wondering, what was this for? And he called me and he said, Sir, about three years or thereabout, when you came into this campus, I was just a fresh student when I came in. And when you preached, I got born again. I got filled with the Holy Spirit and today I'm still standing and doing many things. Every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people, I say, Lord, thank you. I have no business being known. They don't need to know me that I may decrease, that my face cannot heal anybody. My picture cannot bless anybody. There is one mightier than I. He's the one I live and I spend my entire life serving. Please, I speak to you as a servant of God tonight, think about your life. Think seriously about your life. And the way you are ignoring the things of God, as though there is something better. I'm not saying be a pastor. Be an addict enough. When was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel? How many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place? How many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God. Not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Impossible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my. There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The psalmist said, better is one day. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm so desperate to serve you. Although I'm a king, I choose to be an usher, a sanctuary keeper, than a celebrity somewhere. These were men who understood God. They understood the ways. There are some of you here, you think you are too big to join the protocol. You are too big to do this. You see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools. Unfortunately, most preachers have preached service, not as a proof of love for God, but as a way to get things from God. It is true that if they obey and serve him, there are benefits. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Beyond getting things, it is a proof of love. 
so if your work is to bring this water you bring it with all sense of honor not just like you are worshiping a man oh it's a privilege to serve in the house of god it's a privilege if you are to clean the chairs you are cleaning the chairs and say lord it's a it's a privilege it's a privilege you can do without me you have chosen to do with me you are supposed to bake the cake you are seated and you know you have grace you say no i need to join the welfare department i must spend my life i, I need to contribute you are excellent in graphic oh the media needs me service 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 whether you are in zaria or not find a church find a group find a fellowship find a, a congregation of believers many of us are looking for geo and mama that's the only condition you have given god to serve him lord i will serve you if i will be the mama of the ministry i will serve you if you give me the name of my parish the name of your parish is nothing let it be your passion hallelujah are we getting blessed i'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit because i don't want you to waste your time please get back into the mystery of kingdom service get back you spend your time serving a guy because you love him you go to his house you wash his clothes you cook you iron and he says is it not too much you say this is the least i can do for you is it to express my love i'm i'm, I'm not embarrassed call me a fool it's true eh? if loving you is a crime let me be a criminal look at what you are saying look at what you are saying shame on any believer who is saying that i'm telling you i say it again shame on any believer that because of mundane things you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. hallelujah proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 skapaka prondo sopro silia paharatu sufratia proverbs chapter 3 my son forget not my law but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life together with peace shall they add to thee commandment he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of god his commandments are not burdensome brothers and sisters let's hurry up key number three to long life engaging the mystery of the blood key number three let's hurry up engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding there are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance number one in the book of exodus chapter 12 it was used to anoint the doorpost and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people hallelujah number two jesus revealed it to us in the communion the communion in the new testament he began to teach us the mystery of the communion and then number three the mystery of what the bible calls blood sprinkling that the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them first corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30 we may not have time to read all but let's see how far we can go help us media first corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30 paul is teaching the church in corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion 
and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me next verse it says after the same manner he took the cup here and there 25 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye show the lord's death till he comes 27 wherefore whosoever now listen shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily open your eyes i want to show you a mystery unworthily it says this sacrament there are two sacraments that jesus left to the church one is the sacrament of the communion the second is the sacrament of baptism water baptism two of them are still valid they are important today it says whosoever shall take up the cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of what the body and the blood of the lord here comes the mystery 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what he can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of jesus christ relieves life and because he's, he's eating it unworthily he will get the opposite of it next verse 30 read please one two read stop for what cause for the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment for this cause how many people how many how many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them have you ever had any death and they told you that ah this death it was communion that killed the man is it in your bible for this cause did he say few many many are weak for this cause the cause of not discerning the lord's body the cause of not respecting it for this cause of not giving it the honor it says many are weak you believe the bible right many are what sick and many sleep wow for this cause trivializing the body of christ not discerning the power it can release not discerning that this represents the body of jesus beaten battered by whose stripes we are healed it says for this cause that means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily for that cause you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we are not going there we don't have the time we have to move on to other things i'm just giving you references exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death the bible calls it the destroyer that when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel it will leave and trouble you not hallelujah praise the lord key number four honor to parents key number four let's be fast please honor to parents open bracket both physical and spiritual ephesians chapter six from verse two to three honor to parents both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life one to read is projected one to read honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with a promise verse 3 was the blessing that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them 
some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy we think i'm a big boy i'm a big girl i'm now married i have children i'm driving a jeep let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father curse your father or your mother let me show you this proverbs 20 20 a grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers read it please one to read his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth now get this i'm not saying that they lead you to partition so as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation no matter what it is look at me david twice had the opportunity to kill saul is that true are you bible students david had the opportunity to kill saul he caught his rope and went away with it he said i will not be the one to kill god's anointed how many times have people run their mouths talking about men of god you sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of god just talking and smiling the bible says honor your father and your mother whether spiritual or physical he said they that rule well among you deserve double honor honor them that rule well when they have proven a life of integrity not human worship not fear but a sense of honor and respect i honor my parents in life and in death hallelujah some of you have elderly people come around you can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say you came late please i don't want anything to inconvenience me you are there shaking your weave up and down instead of you to stand up and say mama please you can sit down and she say no 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 my daughter insist insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible i'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say i choose to honor my father and my mother how many of you pray for your men of god how many of you pray for ministers you stand here criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal instead of you to get to the place of prayer you stand there saying i always knew i always suspected the way i've been looking at that man you see that continue the bible says he that cursed his father and his mother his lamb his life will be taken away to obscure darkness how many have died as a result of this honor when a father fights his son he loses his honor when a son fights his father spiritual or physical he loses his life that's why many people sadly to say many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries break out and jeopardize the life of the jew thinking god called them notice very few of them ever last because he that dishonored his father his lamb will be taken are we learning number what now number five walking in wisdom the fifth key to long life walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16 those outside if you are still with us say amen god bless you all right proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16 walking in wisdom walking in wisdom foolishness can take a man's life foolishness can cut short a man's life walking in wisdom hallelujah the bible says happy is the man that what finds wisdom that means you have to look for it and the man that get it understanding 14 for the merchandise of it are better than silver and the gain thereof than fine gold 15 she is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her 16 length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand 
riches and honor if you embrace wisdom it will also open you up to long life look at me how many people do you know who cannot drive hello they cannot drive and then they go and carry a truck and kick it because they are trying to impress their colleagues are you seeing how foolishness costs the life of people and then they go to the road they have given the spirit of death unrestrained access how many people drive their cars foil is leaking down are you getting what i'm saying foil is leaking and they don't care there are people who who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus they connect it directly to the carburetor and from the bus, from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running they are smiling how many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal the tire is so it is the, the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight that's the degree to which the car is disaligned and yet he plans to travel to lagos the bible says wisdom is profitable to direct are we blessed A man takes beer alcohol and tells you can i give you a ride you say really you get into the car wisdom you have trusted your life to a foolish man are we getting blessed please how many things do people do go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes directly under your bed is one wire that has been there two years naked wire how many people dry their clothes on naked wires or at least part of it is beginning to cut life wire they dry their clothes and smile they have been doing it i i know how to do it no 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 i'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives you plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie there are many of us the way you own your car there is something only you know how to touch you touch the wires and then something down you just touch it and it sparks cas, cas, and then the thing starts you've been doing it for many years preserved by mercy you think you are wise god is speaking to you tonight how many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground sparking you see it sparking and there is foil directly under yet we went to school is God teaching us wisdom there are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil you buy one jerry can of foil and keep it close there are babies there there are all kinds of things people are inhaling it there are others you never eat well i'm showing you how people partner with satan to destroy their lives you never eat well there's no difference from the day god you were in poverty and now that god is even helping you there is no difference look at mechanics look at what they eat same thing one lady comes with 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 a lele or something and serves them that's what they eat every day every night they take tea in the night see that kind of unhealthy that's why the life expectancy level of africa is about is it 30 or 40. scientifically proven we're not talking of demons here we're just talking of carelessness say carelessness yes yes people do all kinds of things risky things and we think there is no problem to it very risky things is only god that can tell the kind of risks people take every day every day there's food on fire you made yam the water is boiling you want to use your hand to carry it out can't you look for a spoon if the spoon is missing can't you be patient why must you cut you you came complete why must you go back with one hand yes you will make heaven but is that a rich life is that a rich life Why will you cut short your life because of carelessness it's god speaking to us number six 
The sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We're getting deeper now. We're getting to the area where we're going to pray. Luke 10, verse 19. Manda pronda siketele kotaparyadabada. Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold, see, don't be ignorant. I give you power to tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over how many? How many? All the powers of the enemy. He says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. I have given you if you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately he said with wise counsel make war with wise counsel make war I have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just walk by default when the spirit of death is in an environment what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity this is the standard operation there are a few exemptions however but the standard way the spirit of death the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey are you getting what i'm saying now Let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic. A subtopic under point 6, the reality of witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. May I remind you ladies and gentlemen, if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft. I just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 proverbs 1 11 and then psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here Give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. Let's hurry up. Everyone read. Want to read. There shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what? Pass through fire. Or that uses divination. Or an observer of times. An enchanter. Or a witch. Next verse. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer next verse for all that do these things are an abomination to the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god doth drive them out before thee god himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world there are enchanters there are stargazers there are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men the church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of satan nahum chapter 3 verse 4 just look up so that um since it's projected one to read because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot the what mistress of witchcraft that sell what look at what she sells she can she look at her goods the way you sell pure water the mistress of witchcraft and say you can come and meet me and i will give you africa i can give you this village i can sell that soul to you it's in your bible it says she sells what nations through her wardom her fraternity with human beings that means human agents come to meet her I want access to a territory and what does she sell again families is that in your bible is that in your bible that there are witchcraft activities that sell families 
Rando Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23 is a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? All right, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes and make what? Handkerchiefs. What version is this? Okay. It's okay. Upon the head of every stature. Hey, let me show you what the Bible is saying. Where's my handkerchief? They sow pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what? To do what? To hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men. They take on a handkerchief, put it on a statue and call your name. It's in your Bible. They have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you. That is a nice world for as long as you just say, God, I'm here and I love you. Everything is all right. Welcome to planet Earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival. They hunt souls. He said, will ye hunt the souls of my people? They are hunting. They are everywhere. Let me tell you. Especially for Africa. Please don't pretend like you are coming from the Caribbeans. You were born an African. You belong to an African family. And you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of God will not need to go through this. But for now, we must pay that price. Are you there? Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Next verse. Let's look at it quickly. And will ye people, oh, and will ye what? Me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread. To slay what? Read that part. To slay the souls that should not die. To slay souls that should not die. And to do what? To save the souls that are alive. The mystery of spiritual exchange. That a man will see that his time is here. Because the wicked shall be cut short. And he will say in my place. I invoke this and I donate this person. Die in my stead. It was an ancient practice that king used. When they were about to kill them. They killed their children. And an indignation rose and the war ended. It's still being practiced today. Men who give others for their lives. I prophesy to you any man that invokes your name on any altar as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives they will carry their dead body from that altar I say it again in the name of the Lord Jesus that any charm any altar that invokes your name to die the death of another may my God visit them with judgment Next, next verse. Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls, to make them fly. Watch this. Look at the mystery of witchcraft. And I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt, to make them fly. When verse what now? Two verses left. Your handkerchiefs, I will also tear your instruments of divination those those mediums that you use in covens that you flip and call the names of people and somebody is walking peacefully on the street all of a sudden somebody comes with a knife and kills him and they say he just died no sir he did not just die an invocation happening in the realm of the spirit And deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen. amen and they shall know that I am the Lord your God let's read 22 because I can't read all those ones whom I have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at this guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life i prophesy to you again oh lord god of israel i speak 
that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations i declare in the name of jesus christ may those ovens catch fire may those ovens tonight catch fire may those covens catch fire proverbs 1 verse 11 proverbs 1 verse 11 Shabarato Totobaya. watch this if they say come with us let us lie and wait for what let us do what let us wait for blood let us lock privately for the innocent without cause meaning they did not do anything but we desire their blood so we are waiting let's wait for the day that they want to take a step let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit ah. the whole world lieth in wickedness if you are yet to be aware be aware this night write the following scriptures down we may not have time to read them but this is the lot of the wicked this is what god will do with wicked people okay let's look at one of them micah chapter 5 verse 12 but one other scripture you will write this is the lot of witchcraft psalms 109 verse 17 to 18 just write that we won't read it let's read micah chapter 5 verse 12 when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i was amazed one to read and shout amen after you read it one to read He said i will cut off witchcraft i will cut it off because if i don't cut it off they will cut short your life so i will cut it off is god helping us but i mean number seven quickly there are eight points i'm giving you seven activating the ministry of angels the seventh key to long life activating the ministry of angels hebrews 1 14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry angels are real and they help believers we we'll look at a few scriptures they protect they preserve and they contend with wicked spirits part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints because God knows that alone we cannot make it. There is an advantage that wicked spirits have. They have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And so he gave us angels. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. Don't turn there. Just write it. Joshua 5 verse 13 to 14. Joshua has an, an encounter with an angel. Project for us. Project for us 2 Kings 19 verse 35. 2 Kings 19 verse 35. While she's doing that, in the book of Daniel chapter 10, when you read from verse 13, the Bible says that Archangel Michael contended with the prince of Persia. He was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy Daniel. But Daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer. When we pray, we activate angels when we speak we activate angels 
second kings you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the lord went out and smote in the camp of the assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand and when they rose up early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses one angel imagine how powerful they are about 185,000 people killed by one angel in one night when you activate them Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible tells us that when Satan came to carry the body of Moses Satan wanted to come and carry the body of Moses and Michael the archangel again he came to contend with Satan so angels fight to preserve our bodies they fight to preserve our lives preserve our bodies preserve our destinies Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 read verse 11 want to read for he shall give what his angels charge over thee hallelujah to keep thee in all thy ways verse 12 and they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone hallelujah the key to activating them is found in psalms 103 verse 20. psalm 103 verse 20. please begin to prepare the oil there's there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly very quickly quickly bring the oil for me please don't open it yet just bring it these are the instructions that the lord gave me psalms 103 verse 20. go ahead and read one to read bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do what his commandment how do they walk hearkening they walk at the instance of his word they walk at the instance of his word as you pray and declare the word you activate them you activate them you activate them as you speak God's word the moment they hearken to the word they start walking until a word is spoken the angels are not activated the moment they hearken to the word they start moving hallelujah these are eight keys that the Lord revealed to me in my place of retreat and he said teach my people these are the keys to long life these are the keys to long life you can live long and the Lord gave me an instruction he said according to the mystery of the blood and the mystery of the oil anoint my people I don't do foolish things give me the oil I'm not one of those men of God that just does things impulsively and the Lord gave me an instruction he said when I was done with that retreat I should come back and based on two scriptures the Lord gave me Isaiah 10 27 something will happen in this place tonight Monday Brando Susopratia Shibro Satalan de Krasko Brash Tilabai Shibro Zetetete Paladabaya And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder. It shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that haunt your soul unto death, it shall come to pass. That by a mystery as revealed of the Lord of Sabaoth, the avenger of men, that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word, that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. There are charms that must be broken because of the anointing. There are people sentenced to death sentenced to accident sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil the second scripture 
Exodus chapter 12, please. Please, everyone turn there. I sense the anointing of the Spirit very strongly right now. Please turn there. This is the instruction that the Lord gave me. Make sure everyone is participating right now. No matter how far, those following us online, they can get oil if they have access to it. Verse 7, please. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat. He says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel. Go to verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute vengeance. I am the Lord. This is what the Lord told me in the secret place. He said, I'm arising as a mighty man. The blood of the innocent cries before me. That's what the Lord told me. And the Lord said a destroyer is going to move across the nations. And the Lord told me vengeance. There will be vengeance upon witchcraft. I had the Lord and he revealed this to me. My eyes was open in the spirit. And I saw like a cloud moving across territories. And the Lord told me by the mystery of preservation. You preserve my people. That's why I'm carrying this oil. Is serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood. Rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. Inside and outside, pray. Hallelujah. Can we have the plates, please, very quickly? Lift your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it like a believer. In the name of Jesus. Every power of witchcraft manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood I command judgment upon you lift your voice and pray I shall not die but live to declare prayer points say after me in the name of Jesus every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own in the name of Jesus I come against you lift your voice and speak stargazers necromancers those that trade the souls of men they cut short destinies Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake 
the last prayer point say in the name of jesus i declare the seal of the blood over my life my loved ones my going out my coming in no accident shall take my life no terrorist shall take my life no sickness shall take my life i am secure in christ lift your voice and pray pray for yourself pray for your loved ones no death no death no death the destroyer cannot plague my life the destroyer cannot plague my family the destroyer cannot plague my destiny i go it out looking at this olive oil but this is no ordinary oil the lord instructed me to pray through the night over this oil and release the power of preservation that it becomes the mystery of the blood in the spirit and that's exactly what i've done and lord i lift this in the name of jesus i come under this apostolic office in the name of the lord jesus and i declare that over this territory of zaria over koinonia over our families the plague of death will not find expression it will not cut short the lives of people in the name of jesus christ father let this oil lose its earthly significance and take on a heavenly significance in the name of jesus let the terrestrial become celestial let the earthly become heavenly and lord let this carry preservation power in the name of jesus now watch this we're going to do it very orderly and very fast i prayed for this i will anoint the heads of department um two of them will go outside they will just be in front your job is to work orderly i'm sure they'll coordinate them just take a portion put it on your head and come back and blast in tongues begin to blast preservation begin to speak and release life to yourself. Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to pray. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.